Okay, so we have our product index, but now obviously what we need to do is click through onto the product detail page. So this isn't too much work. We need to create our controller and our root. We need to create a base template or at least just a template for this. And we'll hook these up and then we'll just uh, focus on the structure of the product index or the product detail page, sorry. So I guess the first thing then, let's just head over and we will update or rather create a new controller. So let's create a controller in here called product controller. And inside of here, we'll pretty much just have the same things. It's very straightforward. We just have a namespace to this, which is cart controllers. And in here we have our product controller. And as part of this, we want a get method in here. This will take in a slug because remember what we're doing is identifying each product by a slug. So let's just paste the slug in here. We'll look at how we do this within the roots in just a moment. And what we also have is our request and our response. So we can pull these two over from here and uh, use them up here. And of course, what we also want to do is use our product model because we're going to need that as well. So inside of here, then we have our request, which we can type in. We have our response, which we can also type in. And then as part of this, we have our view. So we need to put in twig here like so. And we also have our product in there as well. So product. Now we'll also need to pull in our router here in just a moment, just in case the product can't be found. So obviously we'll need to check if this is found first and then we can redirect the user if it's not found. So let's start then by rendering out a view. We need to create this, but we'll uh, render this now and then we'll go ahead and create that in a moment. So remember we just say view render, we pass in our response and we pass in the name of the view. So in this case, we're gonna be creating a products product.twig view. Okay, so over in our products folder then, let's create a new file and we will call this product.twig and we'll just write product in here for now. So now what we can do is just hook this up to our roots and we can see if this works. So let's head over to our roots file and we'll just duplicate this one down to save a bit of time. But essentially what we need to do here is say something like products and then in here, grab the slug that's passed into the URI. So this will be product controller. And remember now the method is get and we need to give this a name which is just product.get. This means that we can link to it and uh, we don't have to refer to it by its URI. It makes sense to do this just in case we change the URI. So now we can uh, essentially just go over and test this. So we can say products and then we can give a slug. So in this case, I have one up here already. And of course we have a reflection exception here because over in our product controller, we didn't pull in twig. So we just say twig or rather slim twig view in fact no it's the other way around isn't it so it's slim views twig there we go and we'll just bump that up so now we see the product page based on what's which slug we basically have okay so i guess what we can do now is just hook these up in our item so remember over in products partials we have this item just here we have the ability to click on the thumbnail or the title to get through to this page so how do we do this how do we build a link up well, this is as simple as saying, and we'll do this for the image first of all, we just say path for, we give the name of the path, or at least the name of the root, so it's product.get, and then in here we pass through the item that we want to uh, basically be put into the URI. So this happens to be product.slug. So we can do the same thing here for the title, and that is pretty much it. So now when we go over to our index, we'll see that when we click on this, we go through to the correct slug. So we can do it for another one, say Blake Espresso, and we go through here as well. So pretty straightforward, but obviously now what we need to do is update our product controller to actually grab the product, check if it isn't found, and then we want to redirect the user. And then of course, what we can do is uh, pass this details through to the product view, and then just output the information we need. So let's create a product variable just here. And we're gonna say product where, so this is now eloquent. If you've not worked with eloquent before, we're just saying where the slug equals the slug that's passed in here from the URI. 
and then we're going to grab the first result. Now this here will be null if it can't be found. So what we can do down here is say if no product, then here what we want to do is redirect. So to do this, we need to pull in our router. Now I'm pulling a lot into here. Uh, I'm going to pull the router into here in a minute. But what you can do if you want to cut this down is create a constructor. So you would do something like this. So construct, you would go and say, let's say we want to pull our uh, view in here, you could do this, that will inject that as well. And then you could say this view equals view. And then up here, you can just create that property there, or rather that would be called view. And then in here, rather than doing view, you would say this view, like so. So it's entirely up to you how you do this. I'm not going to do this just to keep this simple. But of course, the more you inject here, the more messy things get. So uh, if you do add to this, go ahead and uh, fix that up. So we want to pull in our router then. Now our router comes from slim router. This is just basically what we use for our routing. So here we're going to say router router. And that means that now what we can do is if there's no product, we can return. We use response for this and we say with redirect. This essentially just redirect us to a particular page. Now what we want to do is redirect to home by its name. So to do this, we say router path for home. Now again, the reason we do this is if we do change the path of this, then it will just, or the URI at least, it will just automatically update. We don't need to come through and change all of the URIs. So now let's just click on one of these and let's just change this. And there we go, we're redirected back to the home page. Simple as that. Now, if that's not the case, we obviously get to the point where we render this view. And like we did with the index where we passed in all the products, this time we're just passing a single product in, and that is product like that. So now when we click on this, we now have this product available on this view ready to start using. So over in our templates, or rather in our products template, we want to update this page here to actually output our product. So this is pretty straightforward. All we want to do is use our app base template. So we just say extends templates app.twig. And then in here we want to define the content. So we just say block content. And then down here we go and end that block. So again, we want a row in here. So we can use columns and we want a medium or on a medium viewport. We want four columns here. This will be the image. And then just underneath this, we want eight columns because that makes up a total of 12. We want the details. So that will now look like this. So we have the image here and then we've got the details just here. So for the image, then this is pretty straightforward. We just have an image tag. We know we have that product variable, so we can just say products.image. For the alt, we can say something like product.title and then outside of this image. And then what we want to do is give this a class of thumbnail image responsive. The, what that will do is it will allow us to, when we come down here, have this as a kind of responsive image and it will fit to the container it's in. It won't uh, look a little bit strange. If you don't apply this, you will end up with something like this. So it looks a bit weird. So we have our image in there. That's great. Now we need to focus on the details. So. As part of the details, what we're also going to be including is whether there's low stock or whether something is out of stock. So we're going to go back and update our product model in just a bit. But let's first of all focus on stuff like the header, which is just going to be the product title. So we're just going to say product.title here. And underneath it will be the product description. So here we just say product description. And I think that for now is pretty much it. So that's looking fine. And we can start to output our little stuff up here if we have low or no stock. And we can test this out by adjusting the details in the database. And then finally, we'll come down here and uh, make an add to cart button, uh, which we'll get to a bit later when we actually start adding things to our cart. So to do this, then we're going to come over to models and product. I'm going to start to create some methods in here, which will actually uh, allow us to check things. So the first method then is going to be has low stock. And this will just return true or false. 
So we're also going to have, we'll just outline these first, out of stock. And we will also create a method here called in stock. We won't necessarily be using this just now, but we will uh, be using this later. And we'll finally create a has stock method. And what we'll do is here pass in a quantity. So we'll fill these out. We're not going to use all of them now. We're going to use these two now, but uh, they'll be there ready for us to use. So for has low stock then, what we want to do is first of all, check if it is out of stock and then return false. So this just makes it a little bit com less complicated and we can kind of utilize other methods we have in here. So I guess let's start with out of stock. So what we want to do is say return this stock equals zero. So it's just comparing to see if that stock is zero. If that's the case, we know that it's out of stock. For low stock, the first thing we want to do is check if it is out of stock. So we're going to say this out of stock. And if it is out of stock, we want to return false. Now, otherwise, we want to check if it's less than or equal to five. Now, obviously, you can adjust this figure, but basically that will mean that if it's five or less, that's classed as low stock. So here we want to return this stock less than or equal to five. And what we can do is just go ahead and wrap this in brackets. And then here we can cast this to a Boolean. So that will give us all the information we need. So let's just uh, finally do in stock. And all we want to do here is return this stock greater than or equal to one. That means it's in stock and has stock will basically take a quantity and check if the quantity given is uh, greater than or equal to the amount that we actually have stored in the database. So here it will just be this stock uh, greater than or equal to the quantity that we give. Simple. Though, like I said, we're not going to use these two, but we'll use these two just now. So now that we have these methods on our model, remember what we're passing through to our view is a model. Remember when we did our index, we're passing through a collection of models. Here we're passing through a single model. And if you want to check that out, you can just do a var dump on this and you'll see what I mean. So because we have their methods now, we can update this to check. So a couple of if statements then. The first one will be if product has low stock. And we don't need the brackets here. We can just leave that as it is. And then here we will just end that if and in here then, if we do have low stock, we can create a label, and this will be a span by the way, and in here we can say label warning, and here we just say low stock. So if we duplicate this down and we'll create one for out of stock, so we just say out of stock, that's the method, and here it will be danger for red, and then here we will say out of stock, simple as that. So now if we just refresh on this one, you can see that we uh, just see normal because obviously for this one, we do have stock. So let's pull open our database, go over to products. And this one is this one here. We have plenty of stock. We've got 10. If we set this to five, you can see that we get low stock. If we set this to one, we have low stock. If we set it to zero, we are obviously out of stock. So that just updates there accordingly. So now that we've done them two, let's just finally implement our button down here to add to cart, which obviously we're not going to be clicking through to anywhere at the moment. But what we are doing is we are going to check if uh, the product is actually in stock and only show the button if it's in stock. It doesn't make sense to have a button there if it's not in stock. So here, let's just create, well, we'll create the button first of all. This is just a uh, anchor with a class of button button default and it will be a small button and we'll say add to cart so that looks like this and then for the href we obviously don't need anything so we can just put a hash in here and we can actually use one of the methods that we implemented that I said we weren't going to be using and that is product in stock and then down here we just end that if statement so at the moment we would expect that not to show because we are currently out of stock but if we have one or more, we have add to cart. And of course, it shows that we have low stock anyway. So that is pretty much it. That is our product detail page, updating our product model, and of course, creating our product controller to go ahead and deal with all of this, whether a product exists, 
passing it through to our view and uh, pulling up and creating this product detail page. And of course, this will work for all of our uh, products as well. Thanks so much to Braintree Payments for supporting CoCourse. Why make payment integration more difficult than it needs to be? Braintree's full stack payment platform lets you accept nearly any type of payment from any device with a simple integration. It's flexible and supports most programming languages. So for SDKs for .NET, Node.js, PHP, Python, Perl and Ruby, you'll always have a range of client and server side SDKs available for your integration. Braintree makes payments and your job a lot easier. And you can learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.